Hi, welcome to my video about writing summaries. Uh, so this is a video exclusively for Lake Michigan College um, English 103, though I may use it for my Western Michigan University classes uh, in, in the fall of 2006. So I already have some stuff up here on the board and uh, I dressed appropriately, you see in my most professional garb. Uh, <laughs> kind of ironically, my first video also featured me in a yellow shirt, which, which just is very coincidental. Um, all right, so uh, when we're writing summary, uh, obviously it's a shorter version of the original. You know, that goes pretty much without saying. Shorter version of the original. Uh, so, you know, if the original, like the article I gave you, uh, A Man Who Cooks, is basically a page. It's, I think, three columns, uh, maybe two columns. Can't remember. I'm not, I don't have a copy of it here. Uh, I think it's three columns. Uh, and uh, it's from a magazine, so it's from Glamour magazine. Uh, but but you know, it's it's like ten paragraphs, something like that. It's not a lot of text. Um, so your summary is probably going to be about a paragraph uh, of that. Uh, but it's got to be a pretty good sized paragraph because you want to make sure that you include key details. Uh, key details. So you have to go through the article and sort of identify what the key details are that you're going to include in your summary because you're not going to include everything. Um, and this is sort of an analytical uh, test. Like how um, can you evaluate uh, those details? And this is something that we should address in discussion. Uh, but uh, one thing that I stole from another instructor is to think of it like a pizza. So if you got this pizza, you know, you potentially can have all these different items, you know, a pizza place is going to have, you know, maybe 20 different items that you can put on the pizza, but not everybody likes 20 different items on their pizza. And some people don't, don't like some of those items at all, you know, so that you have to edit, you have to say, okay, we're going to leave that item off. We're going to leave this item off because it's, it's it, it doesn't need to be included. Uh, and this is sort of the analytical process that you go through with the summary, you know, what are the, 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 the elements of the article that you can't do without, you know, like you don't have a pizza without crust, you don't have a pizza without sauce, you don't have a pizza without cheese, or some people might try. Um, I don't think you have a pizza without onions, uh, but some people don't like, like onions. So, you know, it really just depends. So, you know, you have to really look at this piece uh, and, and identify what those key details are. So I'll talk about this a little bit more when I get to prep and I talk about how you're gonna to prepare to write your summary. But first let's talk about the most important part uh, of the summary and, the, and really one of the key lessons that I'm trying to teach you, and that is the essential message, okay? So you're gonna start your summary kind of like uh, a composition essay at a college will start with a, th a thesis. Uh, and a thesis uh, is different than an essential message, but they, they share the same quality in that they generally contain um, the main message, the main point uh, of, of, of the paper, okay? So what we want is, is at the beginning of your summary, you're gonna start with a one sentence global summary of the entire article. So you're going to read the entire article and you're gonna ask yourself, what, how can I express the main idea of this entire article in one sentence? Uh, and sometimes you have to pull from different parts of the article to, to get that essential message in together. Also, you're not going to find it at the beginning of the article. For instance, the article that you're reading, The Man Who Cooks, starts kind of with an illustration, kind of with a story um, for his introduction. It, 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 the, the essential message is not in that first paragraph. It's, just, it's not in there. So, so you got to kind of put it together. It, it, do you have all of it in the second paragraph or most of it, or do you have to pull uh, from elsewhere in the article? So, so we can call this sort of a global uh, summary in one sentence. And this is really key, uh, that the, the summary that you're writing starts with this essential message, and then you fill in the key details following that, you know, and, and, and uh, a benchmark, a possible way to do it is about one sentence per paragraph. And that's why I have this drawn over here. This could be the paragraphs, you know, so we have paragraphs here. I don't know if you can see me anymore. I'm off the screen. Uh, but um, uh, let me see if 
Yeah, you could sort of see that, you know. So, so you look at those kind of like the paragraphs. You know, this is one of the things to do with prep. You know, so I would say read. Um, I would read the the article two to three times. You know, just read it one time straight through, and then set it aside and kind of think about it. This this is the ideal, of course. You know, a lot of people try to do this last minute. They should not do this last minute. You know, a lot of people will try to set the article down next to the keyboard and, okay, I'm just going to rewrite this in a shorter version. I'm just going to go through it chronologically and I'm just going to write a sentence for every paragraph. I'm going to kind of rewrite it. And then they're not going to have the essential message, you know, and, and, and they might not um, have a really good summary, you know, because sometimes you might have two sentences for one of the paragraphs because there's a lot of good stuff in there and you might skip a paragraph. And there might not be anything really good or you might only you combine paragraphs and get it into one sentence two paragraphs or three even is the man who cooks is like a three sentence conclusion or excuse me three paragraph conclusion which you might be able to reduce um, to one or two sentences so um, read it a couple of times ideally this is what I would recommend read it set it aside think about it you know be started far enough in advance of the deadline you know and this is key definitely I'm hoping you're watching this uh, video I'm going to encourage you to watch this video on the first day of week two uh, and, 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 you know, after you watch the video, just go read the article. It's short. It's not going to take you very long, you know. And if, you, you know, you start early in the week, you have time to, to work on the assignment rather than waiting, waiting for the last minute. So read it, set it aside, think about it, you know, then go back to it. Then read it again and start to do some kind of note taking. You know, either list key details on a piece of paper, mark, uh, you know, print out the article I gave you and mark right on it and circle key details, things like that. Or do this kind of paragraph thing that I have here where you, where you kind of number the paragraphs and, and the idea here is what's the function of each of these paragraphs? Obviously, this is the introduction. You know, then later there'd be the conclusion. And what's the function? You know, like there's one... Uh, it's not paragraph three, but he does like kitchens and garages. I should have brought a copy of the article. I, I was sort of testing whether I had access to this classroom so I don't have a copy of the article with me. Actually, I have it on the computer, uh, so I could have, could have done that. But anyway, this is the purpose of this, is, is to sort of uh, say what's the purpose of each of these paragraphs. Um, and that'll give you an idea of the parts that you need to include in the summary. So, you know, if you read the whole paragraph and you think, well, this is really a comparison contrast between kitchens and garages. Um, you know, and then there's, there's another one that's like about barbecue or something, you know. So, so you can say, okay, you know, this is, so I'm going to have to have something about that uh, in, my, in my summary. So this is pretty much the writing. Central message is first sentence, just the first sentence, just in one sentence, and then key details of the rest of it, pretty healthy sized paragraph. You know, it's probably gonna fill half, half the page, uh, approximately, single spaced. I should add this. Uh, single spaced, um, you know, summaries are generally single spaced. You know, a lot of the documents we're gonna do are single spaced. Uh, you can use a 12 point font, probably, uh, Times New Roman is good. I like Courier. Courier is okay. Uh, Arial is a little too big. Um, and others are difficult to read often. So we kind of a standard there. It's going to squelch your creativity. Technical writing is not necessarily a class where we really engage in a lot of creativity, though don't worry, there'll be some sort of creative assignments, but you know, it's technical writing, so how creative are you? You know, <laughs> there's limits on the creativity, right? And, and then we're going to have some style rules, okay? Oh, I, I want to mention one other thing. So then the title of your summary is basically a summary of A Man Who Cooks by Stephen Bauer by, you know, your name. Or you put, you know, a header with uh, your name and the course stuff at the top. That's probably better. Um, and then call it a, a summary of A Man Who Cooks by Stephen Bauer. Um, and then your stuff is up here and then a paragraph underneath that uh, because um, one of our style rules is going to be no ref. And what I mean by that is don't refer to the article in your summary, you know, because the article generally doesn't refer to itself. So don't start it with a man who cooks by Stephen Bauer is about. That's not good. You know, we don't need that. You know, what I'm looking for is the, your ability to write an essential message that's a clear statement of the main idea without referring to the article. And in fact, if you have to write it that way, write, a man who cooks by Stephen Bauer is about blah, 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 and then take off 
A Man Who Cooks by Stephen Bauer is about because you probably don't need it. And you might have to adjust the sentence slightly, but, you know, sometimes people need to do that to get it down, but then take it off. So that's what I mean by no ref. And don't refer to Stephen Bauer in the article. Um, you know, keep it, keep it third person in general, which is why we also have these rules. No first or second person. So first person is I, me, my, you know, yourself, you, the author. Um, you don't want to, you're not in this. You know, you're separated from this. It's sort of an objective distance that you gain by writing this, right? So no first person. No second person. Don't directly address the reader. Even if the article directly addresses the reader, you do not. You're going to keep it in third person. So you're not going to write you, we, our, us, let's, you know, L-E-T apostrophe S for let us. None of that. You're going to keep it third person, which is he, she, men. This is going to be about men. You know, it's an article about how men feel about cooking. You know, and whether they think it feminizes them. So, ooh, just gave you a hint for the essential message. So, um, so no first or second person pronouns. Uh, no added, no added material. A lot of students have a real hard time with this because they're used to writing reactions. You know, so you're used to reading something and then writing what, what you think of it, uh, adding your reactions or or adding some sort of introductory material that connects to other ideas. You know, you may have been taught that. And here I'm asking you to start with the, the essential message, the, the main idea. So no added material and no original material meant original to you, something you created. In a sense, everything you're writing is can be linked back to the article, can be traced back to the article. It's a, it's a summary. It's not a, an essay in which you're reacting to it. So, so these are our style rules. Uh, beyond that, you know, just write clearly, correctly, completely. Uh, you know, try to use your best grammatical knowledge. Um, we're not as concerned about that early in the semester, but we'll probably be concerned about that later in the semester. Uh, you know, we'll get a little, you know, we'll, We'll, we have a learning curve where, you know, expectations will be raised somewhat. So um, just to summarize the summary, <laughs> uh, essential message. I can't stre stress this enough. Essential message. Start with that one sentence, global summary of the entire thing. Make sure you fill in all the key details because this is pre pretty much how I'm going to grade. First thing I'm going to look, well, you know, I'm going to check and see if you got the format all set up right. Do you have an essential message? You know, and, and how close did you get? There's multiple right answers. There's, there are wrong answers, uh, but there's no one right answer. You know, there's multiple ways to express it, uh, but there are certain things that have to be in there. And I, I hinted about it a few minutes ago. Uh, and then I'm going to be looking for the key details. Did you leave out ones that, that you should have left in? And again, this is somewhat subjective because there's no one exact right answer. And we might have a difference of opinion on what we think is important. Uh, but there are certain things that we could probably identify are are definitely important. You have to leave out the kitchens versus the garages completely. You missed the point. You leave out the shop versus the home ec thing and the home ec uh, thing. You know, I mean, there's certain things that have to be in there. Uh, and then follow our style rules. I'm going to make sure that you follow our style rules. And, and all of these things are going to be uh, weighted uh, associated with certain point earnings. So, hey, that's what I have to say about uh, some of your writing. Uh, and, you know, so I, I'm getting into making these instructional videos, so I'm going to keep this up all semester. So uh, have a great day. Bye-bye. Well, see, I'm doing a terrible job shutting this off.